Hello everyone, it's Catrice here, and I welcome you to this new video. Today I want to talk to you guys about Crystron X Omega and what you can do to up your Crystron Disruption game. And without further ado, let's just jump right in. So, here you see a Crystron list that's or rather just some extra deck cards and some main deck cards. Like, you, as you know, some main deck cards are required to play some extra deck cards, so I've got both here. And I will get to them when we get to the extra deck monsters in question. But first up, I want to mention something about the Crystal Exo deck that's really important to me because I myself have made up like a little rule for Crystal Exo decks when it comes to machine synchro monsters. That is, do not run more than five or six machine synchro monsters as setup cards. And with setup cards, I mean cards that are not the boss monsters like Crystal Phoenix or Crystal Four and Gondrex. I mean cards like Quandex, uh, Quan Amatrix, or Insectron as I run them. If we look at mm, the extra deck right here, the extra deck is my extra deck, the extra deck I currently run, which is Needle Fiber, Nova, Infinity, Double Quam Dex, Wonder Magician, Amatrix, Insectron, Black Rose, White Aura Whale, Siphon the Omega, Crystal Wing, Phoenix Warrior, Gundrex, and War Stardust Warrior. That is my personal extra deck. That works best for me right now. I ditched the Formula Synchron, I will talk about that when we get to Formula Synchron because that's still in the options thing. And yeah, that's. That's just my exact that works for me, but I want to talk about what can work for you as well. So let's just jump right in to the side deck that boards the cards that are options. First up, we've got Trishula. Trishula mainly is uh, being dropped right now because of the uh, fact that the old combo for for Quarry and Gundrex was. Um, Having this one option to go for Trishula, like you had the decision that you could go either for Quarrying Gundrex or for Trishula. And that decision making made Trishula very viable in the Crystal Nexo deck because you could like sometimes there's not really the time to go for Quarrying Gundrex because you have to get rid of the card immediately, but your opponent only has one monster on the field, so you would like um yeah, you wouldn't get two off Quarry and Gundrex banishes, which is pretty bad for you. However, with Trishula, you could kind of circumvent that and just go for... Yeah, you could just go for Trishula, steal the card from the field, you have to immediately steal, steal the card from the hand, and maybe you can steal the card from the graveyard, so you get like three banishes off, two to three banishes off most of the time. And that's mostly worth it for that time. However, now that we have the uh, Crystal Needle Fiber, and that card actually proves to be a really good addition to the Crystal Archetype, I must say so myself. I have been pretty wrong in my last video about Crystal Needle Fiber, and I realized that after testing it a bit more. But Needle Fiber pretty much makes it so you don't really need to run Trishula, there's no real incentive to run Trishula anymore, because the new combo can basically go for five different Synchro Monsters. The more uh, or more or less depending on what you play in your extract. Right now, a simple crystal needle fiber combo can lead me to the decision making of going to either summon Black Rose Dragon Phoenix Flowering Gundrex or Stardust Warrior. And sometimes I can even have the, de the decision to summon either White Aura Whale or uh, Psychron Lord Omega. So that's a lot of decisions I have and I can make in order to go through the game and that puts a lot more pressure on your opponent because if he knows what you can possibly do, he knows you have a lot of options to disrupt his plays and he has to plan accordingly so he can go through even more with uh, you have so many weapons at your disposal. And this um, like card, that, this combo that opens up 5 decisions or like 4 to 6 decisions, let's, let's keep it like that. Uh, is way better than the old combo that just had two decisions, which are Trishula and Quarry and Gundrex, and that really outclass uh, this new combo really outclasses the old one, which is why Trishula was actually dropped from the Crystal Needle Fiber, because Crystal Needle Fiber is just so much better. However, if you still want to run Trishula, that's still possible. Like, Trishula is still a great card, but it's not as good as before. You only make it like turn 3, or uh, in your opponent's second turn or something. You set it up in turn 3 basically, and that's not real what we want in that matter. You can still run Trishula, but as I said, eh, it's not really worth it anymore. Next up we've got Road Warrior, and the only reason for, to play Road Warrior is basically to let, it, uh, to let Stardust Warrior float into something, and it's a 3k body, if it survives you can special summon like a C3 from a deck, which is pretty cool. And 
It opens up some combos, but I wouldn't recommend playing it other, uh, other than as like a uh, float material. For that sense it's pretty good, but for the other sense it's just eh. Like you can run it, but eh. Next up we've got Life Stream Dragon. This is the card I'm more enthusiastic about because this card is a pretty good side option if you are playing against things like Trickstar or Chamber. Because this card can be summoned easily with Needle Fiber and just generally kills all effect damage because, well, it prevents you from taking effect damage. Which is pretty neat. Next up we've got Samurai Destroyer. Samurai Destroyer being a pretty great card when it comes to level, level 7 machine synchros, which I am personally not a fan of, but some builds can really utilize level 7 machine synchros, and those builds can really run Samurai Destroyer. Those are also the builds that run like Samurai Destroyer, go for Formula Synchron, draw 1 and go for Phoenix, like that's a combo you have in that, those kinds of decks. It's just not that viable for my deck, but for your deck it might be. Next up we've got two level 7 uh, non-machine synchromances which are Psyfly Zeta and Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. The reason why I personally don't run either of them is like, Zeta is pretty bad in the current meta anyways, because it just gets rid of one card temporarily and while it does come back, and Zeta comes back to the main monster zone, you on, you also could just free up the extra monster zone of your opponent and he could just put the monster that he gets back into any main monster zone as well, which is really, really bad. So I wouldn't recommend running Zeta. For Black Rose Moonlight Ring, it's just that the current meta is not supporting the, uh, it. Like, you can always bounce one special summon card your opponent has on summon. However, it's really only efficient if you can use it to control a little longer, like if you can make its bounce effect when a level 5 or higher monster special sound of your opponent work as well. And the only real decks that utilize such a thing are like Spirits with Sleepers, so that's already not an option because Spiral uh, Resort already prevents you from doing anything with Moonlight Dragon back in both regards. Um, it involves but your opponent immediately negates a Black Rose Moonlight Dragon with Mecha Barbares they summon. Or um, Alter Guys, and Alter Guys are really not worth it. <laughs> worth to, not worth to run a Synchro Monster just for them. Next up, we've got any level 5 machine Synchro Monster. I'm only running one in my extra deck, and sometimes the second one really comes up just for the sake of comboing, like um, using the mechanic to bypass uh, the Synchro Summon and just go uh, leave the two monsters on the field which you can do, which is something I have to probably explain in a, sec in a future video. However, that mechanic is really important to crystals right now and sometimes you're out of the level 5 synchro monster so you, ne so you need a second one, so a second level 5 syn machine synchro really comes up sometime. And for those situations I would recommend a Stambara, you can also run like an Exosynchron or a Crystal Amatrix. My personal favorites would be Chambera or, or the second Amatrix, but because Exosynchron is not really viable, you have Wonder Magician as your level 5 Synchro Tuner, which can which you can summon off Needle Fiber and immediately pop a spell or trap. So Exosynchron is not really viable in Crystals anymore. Next up we've got Formula Synchron. And Formula Synchron is just well to be a level 2 Synchro Tuner, and it can be summoned off like Rose Next Token and Quan. Or you can summon it with Needle Fiber, that's both possible. However, I personally don't like it because in the combos that I use, Formula Synchron always misses the timing because I have to summon it as a... Um, mostly have to summon it as a, like, uh, Channeling 2 card. But sometimes it really comes up with a draw if you, like, are going for a first turn Crystal Wing play. I personally don't have the incentive to do that, but if you want to do that, you can definitely, definitely do that. You get a draw of that situation and it's pretty neat in those regards. So that's something you can do for your deck. Now I've got uh, the, the last cards are just for specific builds. So I'm going over that build path first and just save things after. The first thing is a Coral Dragon plus a Link Spider. And that's only an option if you run Genix Undyne. I personally do not run Genix Undyne, but you should probably do so because it ups your consistency and adds a one card combo to your deck which is basically normal summoning Genix Undyne, dropping Rosenix, banishing Rosenix, special, uh, special summoning the tuner, using the tuner to go Link Spire, Link Spire is effect for controller, controller and Undyne into Coral Dragon, Coral Dragon and Link Spider into Needle Fiber, draw one and Needle uh, Fiber summons with three from the deck. That is that basic new uh, one card Quarian Gundrex combo, which is pretty neat because you draw a card of Coral Dragon. 
I personally don't run it because uh, Gen X Control has a kind of kind of a Garnet, and I always r draw every single Garnet in my deck when I play Garnet, so I just don't want to do it. Next up is totally awesome in Frog Crystals. Not much to talk about there, it's just Frog Crystals, and you have to run Total Map. Easy as pie. And the last thing is, if you're going to run like things like Quasar or Blazer, I would recommend Blazer for its return to the main monster zone, you should run more level 4 machine synchro monsters that are not necessarily Quandex or rather non-tuners. <sighs> that was a long run. Well, that's just my thoughts on possible Crystron Exodic monsters and yeah, I, I think all of these options are viable in some degree in some deck. Maybe with the exception of Psyfram Lord Zeta, that's just plain stupid most of the time. However, pick your cards if you want to. I just argue, uh, like, I just discuss for my thoughts. Like, you can bring up points for your thoughts. Let's keep the discussion alive. This channel is mostly about discussion for th these kinds of videos, so I want to hear your thoughts as well. This has been Akatrius. Stay Raven.